Traveling across the country getting photos of urban wildlife has its challenges and its upsides. But it also has its mixed blessings, and key among those is this guy. This is Mark Utley, one of the show's camera operators. And we happen to be shooting this episode in his hometown of Saskatoon. Easy, right? We've worked easy. and traveled together yeah, a lot. No, to go down. And we've become like brothers. And as anyone with a brother knows, spending loads of time together can be interesting. These idiots just leave the carts here. My name is Andrew Budziak, and I am an urban wildlife photographer. Cities across Canada are home to some remarkable animals that we don't often know are even there. So in this series, I'm traveling coast to coast using photography to tell the stories of some awesome urban wildlife. Each stop along the way has its own unique assignment, challenges, and adventures. So grab your camera. Things are about to get wild. As I hate to admit it, I'm going to need Mark's help on this one. This city has a lot of water. And the beavers I'm here to photograph know the waterways much better than I do. So I'm hoping Mark's local knowledge can at least point me in the right direction. What, what's this? Bridgetown? What's the nickname, Mark? City of Bridges. City of Bridges. I think the best chance to find some of these beavers would be to head to a bridge. There are a lot of them. So I'm gonna go swing by a few with my camera and see what's there. Here's the thing about urban wildlife. You might've been out for a run this morning and seen three beavers in your local creek. But when you actually go out specifically looking for beavers, that's a whole other story. Slipped on this thing, you're losing a lot of skin. When it's not a random sighting, finding wildlife is based on good research, timing, and a bit of luck. So that's why I'm here, down by a river, camera in hand, at sunset. Eyes peeled for hungry beavers. We're on the wrong side. Unfortunately, all of the tasty branches seem to be on the other bank. So we could take the train bridge there. We can walk across that thing. I'm not doing that. I'm not walking across that bridge. Come on, let's walk across, it'll be great. It'll take you way longer to drive around. Walk back there. Okay, all right, all right. Come on, use your legs. Which way? I have no clue. Oh, God. Oh, what a view. Told you, it's way better than driving. Oh, I don't have a fear of heights, but, oh, making my stomach churn. Oh, God. I think there might be pelicans down there. I did my research about urban wildlife in Saskatoon. I had no idea that there were pelicans in the city. I know there are a lot of locals laughing at me right now for not knowing that. Give me a break from Toronto. I know I should be focusing on finding beavers, but pelicans are magnificent. So I picked a spot where I could photograph the birds and keep an eye open for beavers. Look at this beauty. Saskatoon is an exceptionally cool place when it comes to urban wildlife. The city and its residents have done a good job of just leaving urban wildlife alone. And the results are spectacular. Pelicans are stunning. One of the reasons they're so great to photograph is they do a lot of things in tandem. They fish together. They form these lines or sea shapes to dry fish into a tight little group. And then they dive for them. These are the kind of scenes you get when you leave wildlife alone. I had a blast with the pelicans, but unfortunately, no beavers showed up. And I was getting nervous. There's a lot of water in this town, which means the beavers have a big range. I needed a new plan for tomorrow. But as for tonight, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. This is Crokinole 
a wildly popular board game out here in the prairies. Flick a piece, hit an opponent, and whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. Mark taught me this game, and he takes it very seriously. How many times have I beat you? Like twice? Once or twice. Should this be Canada's national board game? I don't know if it's a whole Canadian thing, but I think it's a classic prairie game. You don't think you don't think it's good enough to like like proselytize and it's not a cult. <laughs> Do you know anybody that like you don't like to play with because they get just like ridiculously competitive? I've got a couple uncles that are pretty ruthless the way they play. You play at a proper pace and you're not too good. So I actually like playing you. The strategy for this game is intense. Along with needing to execute crazy precise micro-movements in your fingers, you also have to think offensively and defensively at the same time. And one single good or bad move can turn a game around at the last minute. This is definitely the closest game we've ever had. Yeah, you're doing really well. You're probably gonna win. Don't say that. Why not? Why do you, why do you say that? Did I just win? Yeah, you just won for the second time in your life. Second time on my on life. Camera. We are doing every game on camera. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> another day, another hunt for beavers. I was feeling sharp and focused, but once again, the urban wildlife in this town provided a serious distraction. Oh, oh, look at these things. Oh my God. Okay, look right here to the right, just to the right, just to the right. Unlike the pelicans, I knew there were a lot of these little guys in Saskatoon, but I had no idea just how many there were. I have been looking for urban wildlife for exactly five minutes. And look at this. All they do, look at this, all they chirp, 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 all day long. That's what they do, afraid of everything. Throwing shadows, me, I mean, I'm huge, they should be afraid of me. I'm not huge, but to them I'm huge. Oh, they're so cute. The official name of these critters is the Richardson's Ground Squirrel. But depending on where you live, they also go by Dak Rat, Gopher, Prairie Dog, Flat Rat, Parker Squirrel, and Alan. Regardless of what you call them, they are absolutely adorable. Oh my God, I'm happy. Okay, I can't believe I'm saying this, but we, we gotta go. Like. We gotta leave this awesomeness and go find some beavers. Let's go, let's go. Like I said earlier, there's a lot of water in this town. So I enlisted some additional local help. I heard about a guy who spends a lot of time with the beavers here. I, I'm addicted, I come here every night. <laughs> it's like literally every night, probably. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Degu, Or as he's known in these parts, the beaver guy. So Edgar's over in the corner there. Yeah. He's, uh, he comes, he's the second most regular person after me. He's probably here uh, 25 days a month as opposed to 29. Wow. Of course, you can see their home is here. These two, uh, yeah. they have two bank lodges. It's, we call it their duplex. They have another pond down um, oh, okay. here. Mike knows these beavers well. He also knows the troublemakers around here. Oh, there's, there's a duck in the pond Stupid there. Stupid duck. Huh? Oh, I hate that duck. There's a culvert here yeah. that goes under the sidewalk and they have a little pond. They go back and forth there regularly. Uh -huh. So if I set up and waited kind of for them to come out of the culvert. So you could set up from pretty much anywhere. There's a, there's a beaver coming through the culvert slowly. Doesn't look like he's in a hurry, but there's definitely one in there. Oh, there's a good shot. Andrew's been here less than a couple minutes and he just had a beaver swim up and look at him from two feet away right in the eyes. And that you know what, that happens all the time around here. It also seemed I was a little more welcome than the rest of the crew. <laughs> I don't know how these beavers chose to build a pond, because five years ago, none of this was here. This was all trees, and they just started building it up, trapping the water, deepening it, widening it. And now it's this, just this gorgeous spot <laughs> on the curb. It's really an oasis in, right in the middle of the city.
depending on everything around, you just you get these different colors. And when the beavers swim around, we just get these magical, it looks almost surreal, like they're going through a Monet painting. As they're swimming, yeah. these blues and greens and yellows and silvers mix with the ripples as they move around. Gorgeous. This was a magical spot, but I wasn't able to land a photo with a great urban background. I told Mike what I needed, and he said, leave it with him. If you're lucky enough to find yourself in Saskatoon on a beautiful summer day, I suggest heading to Cross Mount Cider. Everything they make is delicious. Thank you. And their grounds are beautiful. That cider is to die for, and I detect just a subtle hint of apple. While I wait for night to fall and for the beavers to become active again, thank you. I thought I'd take a moment to explain why beavers are, well, saving our cities. Cue the misery. You may have heard that our planet is fucked. The climate crisis is destroying nature, our physical and mental health, and our urban infrastructure. Beavers can't help with those first few things, but they can help with the urban stuff. Increased flooding from rising sea levels and extreme weather is punishing our urban infrastructure. Have you had the pleasure of pumping water out of your basement in recent years? That's what I'm talking about. So what do beavers have to do with this miserable gift from the climate crisis? Well, very recently, we realized the wetlands beavers create and manage with their brilliant dams are an excellent way to deal with floodwaters. These rivers and ponds act like storage basins for excess water that would otherwise find its way into your basement. Unfortunately, a lot of cities still see beavers and their dams as problematic. Instead of using proven preventative measures, like fencing, cities will trap and kill these aquatic engineers. As the climate crisis becomes harder and more expensive to fight, the beavers are creating a free and elegant tool. And for this to work in other cities, all we need to do is exactly what Saskatoon is doing. Sit back and let the beavers do their thing. And now it was time for me to do my thing. Funny enough, torrential rains were on their way, so I needed to get my photo ASAP. Mike told me to meet him down by the river. He had a plan. What's up? So the problem with the river beavers yeah. is they have a territory a kilometer long. Yeah. And they've only been on the east bank the past few weeks. Yeah. So I come here and I can scan most of their territory with binoculars. Yeah. And there's one in a really good spot right now. Okay. So follow me. I'll follow you. We are in hot pursuit now, boys. Hold on to your butts. This is about to get wild. You feel that adrenaline? This is beaver adrenaline. Mark, what's the speed limit here? I don't care, don't tell me. I don't wanna know. Oh God, we are in hot chase. <laughs> we are chasing beaver all over this town. Oh my God, he's burning out. Holy shit, Mike, slow down. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> I'm not getting a ticket over this. I'm obeying the speed limit, I promise, for anybody watching this, I'm obeying the speed limit. My heart's going, how about you guys? It's go time. I'm just checking to see if that beaver's still sitting there. Oh my God, look at he's just sitting in the water in front of the beach over there. Okay, I'm if gonna, we, I'm gonna. Oh, that, okay. that would be the best. Oh God, I hope he stays there. That was it. That was my moment. And I missed it. The beaver swam off into the giant river. But Mike had a hunch. So come back with me. There's a good spot. We might get a good shot. That was the absolute last second of light. And I got it. Perfect. And look, 
Is there paint on the rock? There's a little, bit of, paint, the a little bit of paint on the rock. Graffiti yeah. on the rock. Oh, and I love his hand on yeah. the rock. Perfect. So there it is. And then there's the bridge. There's the water. You got the sky on the macro. And what a night. That's awesome. Uh, this was really fun. All right. What awesome. a day. What oh, a day. now we got to climb up. I need a beer. I'm so happy with that photo. I'm over the moon. And I think the only way to celebrate is another round of Crokinole. What do you say, buddy? Bring it on. You're going to lose. No, your luck ends now. You want to put some money on this? Yeah. Mark, I see why you like it here so much. I don't know why you ever moved to Toronto. <laughs>